surgery residency training programs greatly impact outcomes after pancreatic duodenectomy greater than hospital volume or surgeon frequency. Historically, outcomes following pancreatic duodenectomy have been ascribed to surgical technique, specifically the technique of the anastomosis. Where is it made? One or two layers. What about the pylorus? Is it spared or not? Drains? Do you leave them behind? Where do you leave them? Today, outcomes are superior to those seen in the past, even the recent past. In fact, in the 1970s, it was not uncommon to have mortality rates uh, reported at 20% or greater. Today, in most modern series, mortality rates are less than 5%. Regarding perioperative outcomes, what accounts for differences today? Well, recently, surgeon frequency and hospital volume have been implicated and tied to improved outcomes following pancreatic duodenectomy. The purpose of our study was to define the roles that training centers play on outcome, specifically length of stay, hospital cost, and in-house mortality following pancreatic duodenectomy. We also sought to evaluate the effects of training centers relative to previously described predictors of outcome hospital volume, and surgeon frequency. In undertaking this study, we hypothesized that training centers would be associated with improved outcomes, specifically shorter length of stay, less in-house mortality, and less hospital charges. We hypothesized that the impact training centers have would be similar to the impact seen by surgeon frequency and hospital volume. Methods. We used the State of Florida Agency for Healthcare Administration database queried it for uh, patients undergoing pancreatic duodenectomy between January 2003 and December 2007. In undertaking this search, we uh, used ICD-9 codes, specifically the codes for proximal pancreatic duodenectomy and radical pancreatic duodenectomy to identify our patients. Training centers were defined as those uh, hospitals that have MD-associated general surgery residency programs uh, affiliated with them. Non-training non centers did not have the above. Comorbidities. Comorbidities, according to this database, are defined uh, at the time of hospital discharge by hospital coders. Patients are broken into one, or, one of two groups. The first group was minor or moderate, and the second group was severe or extreme. Admission status was listed as elective or non-elective. With the data we obtained from the State of Florida Agency for Healthcare Administration database, we created a Microsoft Excel uh, spreadsheet and undertook our statistical analysis using the program GraphPad. Again, I alluded to this earlier, our primary measures of outcomes were length of stay, in-house mortality, and hospital charges, with the secondary outcome measure being the impact that training centers have relative to uh, previously studied predictors. Our statistical analysis was done using the chi-square test or the man whitney u test where appropriate. And to better assess the impact of training centers relative to uh, hospital volume and surgeon frequency, we used an analysis of covariance, abbreviated as ANCOVA. ANCOVA. Results. This slide shows the distribution of pancreatic duodenectomies in Florida between 2002-2007. There were 2,345 total patients that underwent the procedure, and the majority of these patients had their procedures done at training centers, 63%, while a minority, 37%, had it done at non-training centers. The demographic data for patients undergoing uh, pancreatic resection in Florida. The mean age you can see is comparable between the groups mid-60s, and that's comparable to previously described uh, average age of patients undergoing pancreatic duodenectomy. The ratio of male to female was uh, about 50-50 for both training center and non-training center patients. Severity of comorbidities. So when you look at this slide, remember patients were broken up into one or two groups by the hospital coders at the time of discharge, minor, moderate, or major extreme. And well, I can't point to it with that, but you can see that 95% of patients uh, for the non-training center group fell under the major extreme category. And that was more than the, that was a higher proportion of patients that fell into that category for the training center patients, 89%. Admission status. More patients were admitted as elective admissions at training centers versus non-training centers, 84% versus 60%. 
This slide demonstrates our primary outcomes. Remember, we looked at three things, length of stay, hospital charge, and in-house mortality. The median length of stay at training centers was shorter than the median length of stay at non-training centers, 12 days versus 17 days. Hospital charges, similarly, were less at training centers, $87,000 median, versus $120,000 at non-training centers. Mortality, in-house mortality, was less at training centers, 2.7% versus 11% seen at non-training centers. This slide shows our ANCOVA analysis, which we used to assess the impact of training centers relative to, to surgeon frequency and hospital volume. The favorable impact that training centers had relative to surgeon frequency was greater for length of stay, hospital cost, and in-house mortality. The favorable impact that training centers had relative to hospital volume was greater for hospital cost, but not for in-house mortality or length of stay. In conclusion, most pancreatic oduodenectomies in Florida are undertaken in hospitals that have general surgery residency training programs. Surgery residency training programs in all they entail have favorable impacts on outcomes following pancreatic oduodenectomy. That's my Thank you very nicely presented. <laughs> Dr. Farnell is going to open the discussion. Wayland, uh, well done, and thank you for sending me a copy of the manuscript electronically in advance of the meeting. I have a couple of quick comments and then one question. And the first comment has to do with the ANOVA calculation that was done. In the manuscript, there were no data relative to hospital volume or surgeon volume. And I think it would be really important for a reviewer reviewing your manuscript to have those data to see how that calculation was done. There are inherent limitations uh, for administrative databases. An administrative